Hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to discuss the deleterious effect of orthodontic treatment. Now the learning outcomes for this lecture will be to describe the adverse effects of orthodontic treatment on dental tissues, the causes, prevention and management of white spot lesions, discuss the risk factors and management of root resorption, and explain soft tissue trauma and other potential side effects of orthodontic treatment. Now, the definition of a deleterious effect is any adverse effects or damage to the individual patient resulting from orthodontic treatment. Now, we can classify uh, deleterious effect into four main groups. We have the intraoral effects, we have the extraoral effects, we have systemic effects, and lastly, other miscellaneous effects. Now, there might be some uh, overlapping between intraoral effects and extraoral effects, as some of the adverse effects uh, uh, appears both intraorally and extraorally. Let's have a look at intraoral hydrogenic damage. Now, uh, this first we have crown damage. Okay, the first type of crown damage is what we call a white spot lesion or enamel decalcification. Now, this is caused by the acidic byproducts of plug metabolism and is worsened by the ingestion of acidic. Or carbonated drinks. Now this is related to poor oral hygiene and there's also a relationship to the length of treatment. Now the longer the treatment the more likelihood uh, there will be enamel decalcification. Now treatment of enamel decalcification involves some form of application of topical fluoride we can use acid pumice microabrasion techniques or we can veneer the teeth to mask the white spot. Now prevention is better than cure and uh, in terms of prevention what we can do is we can uh, exclude patients with poor oral hygiene from undergoing orthodontic treatment and while patients are undergoing treatment Oral hygiene uh, should be monitored and dental hygiene education should be given or reinforced from time to time. Now, a use of gla a glass inomer for bonding brackets is useful since glass inomers tend to leach fluoride. And similarly, the use of fluoride mouth rinse, toothpaste or varnish is also helpful. And for sim purpose of cementing bands, we could use a fluoride releasing band cement. Now, enamel trauma. Now, enamel trauma can occur by a few ways. One is the upper teeth gets abraded due to contact with the lower brackets, which are made of ceramic. Okay. Now, uh, and also the damage can be caused by burst during debonding process. Now, how do we prevent enamel damage? So, in the case of ceramic damage due to ceramic brackets, we can, uh, uh, one way of uh, solving the problem is to use metal brackets on the lower, especially lower posterior teeth. Now, as as it concerns the debonding procedures, uh, tungsten carbide bursts in slow speed handfuls are less damaging compared to high speed bursts. And debonding of ceramic brackets needs to be done with care as debonding ceramic brackets can be damaging to the enamel. Now, Dentine hypersensitivity. Now, dentine hypersensitivity commonly arises 
as a result of uh, the orthodontic procedure of interproximal reduction or IPR. Now, usually this procedure is carried out to manage crowding and also to eliminate black triangles. Okay, as shown in this diagram, and uh, it, it reduces uh, black triangles because when we do interproximal reduction, the teeth moves closer together. Now, during this procedure, 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 millimeters of enamel can be removed from each proximal surface of the tooth and uh, usually this might result in a mild and transient sensitivity which subsides over time. Now the prevention involves the use of uh, fluoride mouth rinse and varnish and before reduction can be done it must be the thickness of the enamel must be assessed so that only the correct amount of uh, enamel is uh, removed. Okay, root damage or resorption. Now, external apical root resorption or EARR is characterized by the loss of cementum or dentin leading to root shortening. Now, a slight root resorption is unavoidable as a result of orthodontic treatment. Now, orthodontic forces causes bone, both bone and cementum to resolve, but the cementum is normally repaired. Now, trauma to root apex re resulting in death and root resorption. In this, re this trauma, uh, trauma is more likely with heavy orthodontic forces and more likely with longer treatment duration. Now, what are the risk factors for root resorption? Now, roots that are blunt and short are prone to resorption. Any previous trauma that is inflicted on the thin also causes it to be prone to resorption. Uh, the treatment duration also affects on the resorption. Certain treatment mechanics like intrusion mechanics also causes uh, root resorption. And there is also an individual susceptibility towards root resorption. Now the prevention involves taking a careful history and doing a thorough clinical and radiographic examination. The forces employed to move the teeth must be light and intermittent and the treatment duration should be kept to minimum as possible. Pulp damage. Now the risk factors for pulp damage are um, slow speed end pieces can cause transient pulpitis and composite Polishing burrs and stones also generate heat which damages the pulp and the electrothermal bond debonders use to debond ceramic factors as also an effect on the pulp. Now to prevent the pulp damage, it's advisable to use light forces, careful use of burrs, stones and thermal debonders and intermittent use of burrs with plenty of water cooling. Now, periodontal inflammation. The types of periodontal inflammations commonly seen are gingivitis, periodontitis and burns. Now, some amount of gingivitis occurs with fixed appliances which interfere with oral hygiene measures and contributes to plaque accumulation. Now, burns caused by electrothermal debonders, acids, uh, acid, and acid etching, etching fluid. Now, how do we prevent damage to the periodontium? Good oral hygiene is very important. We could use an electric toothbrush or prop and as uh, 
complemented with professional prophylaxis. Now, it's better to employ direct bonds than compared to cementing bands. Careful use of thermal debonders and the careful use of acid etchants, preferably using a rubber dam. Now, periodontal cytotoxicity. Now, bonding agents and adhesive, especially the earlier generations of adhesive, showed uh, cytotoxicity and mut mutagenicity. But these offending materials have now been removed from the market. Now, uh, with, uh, even with good oral hygiene, in, during orthodontic treatment, uh, up to one millimeter of crestal bone loss is evident. Now, this has minimal long-term effect if good oral hygiene measures are employed. Now, bony fenestrations and dehiscence. Now, this happens when there is excessive proclination of teeth or excessive expansion of the arch by dental tipping of the buccal teeth. And these fenestrations and dehiscence are not conducive to long-term periodontal health. Now, mucosal trauma. Now, this can arise as this is seen as ulceration and can arise from arch wires. Now, if arch wire distal ends are left uh, uncut and just sharp, they will end up ulcerating the mucosa. Unsupported span of wires, hooks, as we see here, and fractured wires. Now the initial ulceration, ulcer there is also an initial ulceration from brackets in the initial phase of treatment. Now if a labial bow is used, a displaced arm of the labial, inner arm of the labial bow can also cause uh, ulcerations. Now how do we prevent this mucosal trauma? Arch wire ends should be turned in so that they are they do not prick the mucosa then long unsupported span of arch wires should use a elastomeric sleeving to protect the mucosa now face bows designs now has improved which incorporate safety features in the inner bow mechanism which prevents it being dislodged or if it is dislodged, it snaps away. Now, sharp edges or rough edges of the brackets can be covered with a soft wax to enable uh, to eliminate mucosal trauma and to make it comfortable. Now, since uh, ulceration is uh, common during the initial phase of treatment, uh, it may be necessary to use some form of ulcer medication during the initial stage of treatment. Now, transpalatal and lingual arches can also give rise to mucosal trauma, especially when these uh, arches are very poor, uh, not properly adapted and they come into contact with the mucosa. Here we see an uh, example of uh, ulceration left on the palate by transpalatal arch and this is an example of uh, damage on the surface of the tongue due to a transpalatal arch. Now uh, allergies. Now the most common allergen is nickel followed by elastomerics as well as bonding agents. Now, allergic reactions can present as a rash, it can present as a burning sensation or numbness in the mouth. Now, how can we prevent these allergies happening? We can do patch testing to test for allergy for particular materials. And if we know a particular material is uh, uh, causes allergy, that material should be 
uh, should not be used. Then uh, there are brackets and arch wires which are free, uh, which comes in nickel free uh, metal, uh, metal formulations. And we could also substitute latex elastomerics with uh, non -latex, latex or synthetic elastomerics. Now let's have a look at extra oral hydrogenic damage. Now temporomandibular dysfunction is considered to a multi uh, as a multifactorial etiology. Now there is it is uh, uh, controversial whether orthodontic treatment causes uh, temporomandibular dysfunction. And some authors believe that the change in disposition articular disposition due to orthodontic treatment causes this temporomandibular dysfunction as well as a change in condylar function position okay there's also been some controversy whether extractions of teeth as part of orthodontic treatment uh, contributes to the etiology of temporomandibular dysfunction now the supporting evidence is weak to show that temporomandibular dysfunction is caused by orthodontic uh, treatment. So the conclusion is orthodontic treatment does not cause temporomandibular dysfunction, neither does it cure temporomandibular dysfunction. Now headgear induced injury, okay, now one to the eye, the face wall injury face bow injuries due to dislodgement and spring back of the bow. Now if the bow is accidentally uh, pulled by a, a, a another person, third person, probably a sibling, that bow because of the attachment to the elastic um, component to the uh, head strap, it can spring back and and into a poke into the eye skull leading to eye injury. Now displacement of the uh, face bow can also cause uh, skin uh, injuries and bruising from the neck strap can also lead to uh, skin injury. Now how do we prevent these injuries? Now the it is advisable or it is um, compulsory to use headgears with safety features incorporated into it and proper advice regarding care and use of the headgear must be given to the patient as well as the parent and the should be, patient should be advised to seek ophthalmic treatment if any eye injury happens and headgears can be substituted by temporary anchorage devices or also known as mini screws for anchorage purposes. Now allergies, now nickel is a uh, common uh, uh, allerg allergen but um, it is uh, it, it, it leaches from the metal parts of the head care now one way to prevent this is to cover the metal parts with tape or to use uh, substitutes for uh, headgear such as temporary anchorage devices. Now in as far as acrylic, uh, acrylic is goes, now the polymerization product of acrylic and metacrylic acid gives rise to uh, allergens and these allergens can cause allergic conduct, uh, contact dermatitis. Now, however, this early generation adhesive which were allergic have been removed from the market and current products are generally non-allergic. Now, burns can either be chemical burns or physical burns. Now chemical burns are commonly caused by etching fluid. Now 
for the purpose of uh, bonding brackets we use a 37% phosphoric acid and in the case for bonding of brackets on uh, porcelain crowns we use a 9% hydrofluoric acid now hydrofluoric acid is uh, described as a weak organic acid but do not let this fool you as it is a very dangerous uh, acid which is the capability to dissolve glass now to prevent these chemical burns the is advisable to use rubber dam for etching procedures especially for porcelain etch eye protection is mandatory and it also must be used with high speed suction okay now thermal or uh, physical burns are usually result from an overheating hand piece now let's have a look at systemic effects of treatment so again allergies okay can be can manifest locally or it can manifest uh, in a systemic manner again it can be caused by nickel which comes from the orthodontic bands orthodontic brackets arch wires or headgear and usually in the case of nickel allergy the patient has been previously sensitized via jewelry and this can be easily be tested by using a patch testing and if necessary the offending part can be used uh, can be substituted with another non allergic uh, component now infective endocarditis is caused by bacteria bacteremia from oral flora entering the blood stream now this usually happens due to extraction of teeth and also to a lesser extent banding of the teeth now when we band the teeth the band or the edge of the band sometimes is seated subgingivally and this can result in gingival trauma which leads to the oral flora entering the blood stream now to prevent this we need to take a thorough medical history preferably send the patient for a cardiology consult we should give the patient antibiotic cover on the uh, basis of the cardiology consult now again we can substitute bonds for uh, bands okay as i explain why uh, bands can cause uh, bacteremia and one way also another way what we can be done is uh, before the apply orthodontic appliance is adjusted or manipulated uh, chlorhexidine mouth rinse is prescribed now cross infection cross infection there are various types of cross infection it can be from one patient to another patient it can be from the patient to the operator or it may be from the operator to the patient now, to prevent this again a thorough medical history of all the patients uh, all the patients should be taken now for a strict regime of proper sterilization and disinfection procedures must be followed all clinical staff should be uh, undertake to, uh, to use PPE personal protection equipment such as mask gown gloves goggles etc and all clinical staff should also preferably be vaccinated with hepatitis B vaccination the other systemic effects of treatment is radiation okay now in malaysia the radiation is uh, uh, is legislated by the radioactive uh, substance act 1968 which was replaced by the atomic energy licensing act of 1984 now uh, the ministry of health has control on the use of organ ionizing radiation for medical and 
non-medical purposes. Now the unit of radiation is millisieverts. Now 25% of all radiographic examinations worldwide are uh, supposed to be dental uh, radiographs. Now the effects of excessive receiving excessive dosage of radiation now there are direct effects which lead to degeneration and death of cells there's indirect effect whereby the cells die due to a compromised blood supply it may give rise to constitutional symptoms such as malaise uh, nausea and vomiting it may lead to neoplastic change or cancerous change and the genetic effects are usually seen in the offspring. Okay, how do we prevent radiation effects? Now, we have to follow the ALARA principle. It means as low as necessarily achievable. Okay, now we can use collimation of the X-ray beam, filtration of the beam, and we can use rare earth intensifying screens. By the use of these intensifying screens, we can reduce the uh, intensity of the X radiation. The voltage regulation, which is 60 kV for dental equipment, use of fast film is also helps as fast films allow the uh, films to be uh, exposed for lesser time and quality control measures must be uh, for must be constantly uh, enforced in the uh, premises with the radiographic equipment now what are the other effects of treatment now pain orthodontic pain now all orthodontic produce uh, procedures produce pain and pain is a subjective response which is dependent on the age and gender of the patient, the individual pain threshold for each patient, the magnitude of force employed by the orthodontic appliance, the emotional state of the patient, cultural differences uh, in the patient and any previous pain experience. Okay. Now, uh, the pain is caused basically by an inflammatory process in the PDL, periodontal ligament, which tends to release chemical mediators. There are many of these chemical mediators, of which one is the group of neuropeptides. Now, the effect of this pain is it produces poor patient compliance as Patients uh, are not encouraged to wear the appliance due to pain and this can even lead to a discontinuation or a early termination of treatment. Sometimes the pain is sufficiently severe to um, disrupt the sleep of the patient and there can be pain when chewing so which uh, makes the um, which makes the uh, patient uh, uh, discomfort for the patient while eating and sometimes it even forces the patient to uh, sustain on a soft diet. Now the management of pain involves the use of uh, NSAID analgesics and you can use an anesthetic gel like for example aura cakes we can use chewing gum or we can use a plastic wafer